Hello, how are you? Uh, this is a different video than the ones that we actually post because it has no races. Also, uh, it's in English, uh, which also let me uh, practice a bit. Uh, but uh, it mixes uh, two of my favorite topics. One is uh, racing and sim, well, sim racing, and the other is artificial intelligence. We are gonna see if we can explain how this uh, Sophie agent uh, was made. So uh, stay with us here at Quesadilla Racing, where we read uh, sim racing, IE, or artificial intelligence and machine learning research papers, so you don't have to. So for all of you that uh, normally follow us uh, in Spanish, I'm gonna put the uh, captions or the subtitles. Uh, let's start for what it is. So in the own words of Sony, this is what GT Sophie is. The simplest way I would explain GT Sophie is an AI agent that learned to drive by itself at a very competitive level and is able to compete with the best drivers in the world. So uh, to test the engine, uh, they put it to compete with the best players in the world. So they um, uh, tested uh, with Valerio Gallo, uh, Emily Jones and Igor Fraga, which are champions and uh, they are really, really, really good Gran Turismo uh, racers. Uh, and well, the, AI, the artificial intelligence beat them in some cases even more than a than a second uh, but it's interesting uh, how they did it uh, for example in this case um, we can see gt sophie uh, against valerio gallo and we can see uh, these very weird uh, lines that it takes please so basically they, the artificial intelligence is trying and trying and trying. Uh, also, Emily Jones uh, mentioned something, so let's hear from her directly. It was insane. Like the way that it drove was completely different to to like the way that I drove certain corners, and and it, it took me a while to get my head around what it was doing. The AI was so fast at committing to corners, like get. The AI was really good at committing to an apex and getting on the throttle. I was braking later than the AI, but the AI would get a much better exit than me and beat me to the next corner. Uh, also, they uh, wanted to see how the uh, agent will do in a real race or, or, or racing. So basically, they brought also the best players there. So the, the uh, Sophie play against Miyazono, Tamanaka, Ryu, uh, Kokobun, which are like uh, Japanese drivers, really, really good. Uh, and the first time, uh, as a team, they beat them. Uh, Grand Final! Well, for the second try, uh, Sony and Poly Polyphono Digital retrain the artificial intelligent agent. Well, Sophie, let's call her. Oh, call it. Call her. Call him. Call them. Call uh, the agent uh, Sophie. And uh, uh, they came back a few months later. And in this case, the artificial intelligence, they beat the humans. And this is what it means for the point standings. Easily double the points there for Sophie. 104 points to the GT drivers, 52 at the checkered flag. Fantastic driving from all in. But do you think that it was a fair game? Uh, we'll see. We will go in a moment, uh, so stay tuned. Meanwhile, so they build an agent, an intelligent agent, and they mentioned that without a model, normally, well, in some cases, an artificial intelligence, you have a model, a mathematical model. In this case, they didn't do it. They didn't use a model. So what we know, uh, first, we want to be, well, we want to go a bit deeper in machine learning and artificial intelligence than other videos, but also we don't want to go too deep. Uh, so to start, 
they use reinforcement learning and artificial neural networks. What? Reinforcement learning is uh, relatively simple. Basically, we have an agent that observes the environment as uh, any human or any animal. It receives a... And it receives a, a reward depending. Well, the agent observes the environment and take an action and receives a reward. And a reward it can be positive and negative. So the agent it will learn that in certain states or situation it has to react in some way. For example, your dog, if your dog goes to the bathroom inside your house, possibly you will get a negative reward and the dog they will learn, oh yeah, I have to go outside. Uh, if they do something nice, you will give him a cookie, which is a positive reward, and the dog will not learn, like, for example, to sit, to roll. The artificial intelligence is not very different than that. Obviously, we have mathematical equations and some other things. Uh, but in the case of reinforcement learning, it's very natural because it's the way that we humans and other animals we learn. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, reinforcement learning, as I said, we have the uh, agent, uh, like we see in the, in, the, in the picture, we have the state, we have the reward, we have the environment, and we have actions. And then we have a cycle where the agents try many actions in different situations. So what are the issues here? Team racing games, what is the environment? Well, the environment is a mix of different inputs. For example, the speed, uh, the re revolution per minute uh, that we have in the car, and some special uh, information where, where you are in the track, if you are in the middle, in the side, you are forward, there is a curve uh, in, in, in front of you, there is a straight line, etc. So those are the, the, the inputs. Uh, so, but those, how do we code that those inputs uh, to a computer? So basically, we codify those in bits. So for example, the speed, if we have two bits, uh, for example, two kilometers per hour, uh, binary, because we have two bits, zero, zero, it will be the, spe the, uh, the speed of zero. Uh, the binary 01, it will be 66 kilometers per hour. And 102, one zero, that it will be two, it will, it will be 132. And one one, that it will be three, or the state three, it will be uh, 200. Uh, we don't have a lot of resolution. So there is a trade-off in between resolution and more states. For example, if we want eight bits, for our speed, which is gonna represent to be represented in 256 uh, numbers, well, we have a almost a resolution one kilometer per hour. But also that would really means that we are gonna have like two at the power of n states. So the problem with that is that the agents to learn that it has to visit all the states to to, to, to know which action it has to take. So it's not the same to visit four states and learn little by little in four states than to learn in 256 states. So this, this needs a lot of, uh, of, uh, of, of computing power. And if we start adding more inputs, because you only you don't only need the speed, you need the revolution per second. As, and as I said, you need like special inputs. So if you start adding those, then you start multiplying all those that. So for example, in the case of just 250 states and three variables, we have 16 million of states, which is a lot of computing. So how do we deal with that? Because we have 16 million of states, so we cannot compute that, that's too much. So basically we use artificial neural networks. So artificial neural networks are, <coughs> sorry, artificial neural networks are better known for supervised learning. Differently that uh, reinforcement learning where the agents learn by trial and error. In supervisor learning, what we have is some data that is labeled. So in this case, we have a square triangles and hexagons, and then we label those. And then we put that in the in model training and we feed them. And then the machine start learning like something like this is a square, something like that is a triangle, and something like that is an hexagon. So it trains and trains and trains with this labeled data. So we also, we use this data, and then we check that the uh, agent uh, really learned or, or, or not. And one of those techniques, techniques or methods or frameworks is artificial neural networks. Uh, but we use artificial ne neural networks a bit differently here, and let me explain. So to start, 
what is an artificial neural network? So basically, we have, if we decompose that, we have neurons. The neuron is like the neuron in your brain. So it receives an input, it processes like a mathematical function, and it generates a, 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 an exit. So basically, we create like a net of those uh, neurons. And then we have here uh, an artificial neural network. So we have the inputs, the processing, and the outputs. So basically, this is the analog of, a, of a, the example that we saw before. So we will input some way codified the uh, hexagons and the triangles, and then we'll generate uh, outputs. As you can see, uh, we can start adding a lot of data, and then we simplify the output in, in some way. So basically, that is how uh, Sony is doing doing it, and some other research in artificial intelligence and um, with a lot of space uh, did it, uh, and also, uh, for example, the mine and some others. So also the nice thing about neural networks is that you can have layers. So basically you can add more layers and layers and it gets complicated, but also they are, in some cases, it could be more e efficient. So there is also a trade-off there. So in the case of Sony, basically they use artificial neural networks, or that's what I think that they use because I couldn't access this research paper. Again, I mentioned that. Uh, and they feed that to the reinforcement learning uh, algorithm. So as I said, uh, artificial ne neural network helps to reduce the state space. Uh, in, if, and for example, some specific uh, artificial neural networks are used like convolutional neural networks that uh, we are not going to go even deep to that. So there are different algorithms uh, in reinforcement learning. The most well known is Q-learning, uh, but there are also SARSA temporal different learnings and all other that I won't explain here. And in the case of uh, uh, Sony, they use that is something that is called quantile regressions of actor critic or QR SAC, uh, which also we won't go into the details of that. Now, as I mentioned, the, to represent the state, we can use like the speed and some other things. What we know uh, that Sony did is to fine tune penalties for collision in order to shape uh, the driving style, uh, to not be too aggressive, but also trying to win. Um, and also uh, they use a precise map of the course with coordinates, track boundaries, and precise information about the, the load of each tire, the slip in angle, uh, of the tires and other vehicle state, which I will comment a little bit later, but I think it's kind of cheating. Uh, but in the side of the uh, of the infrastructure, uh, they needed a lot of processing. So basically, they use like a thousand PlayStation fours uh, to play the games, and they use uh, a collection of uh, training data uh, for Sophie to evaluate each one of the versions. So basically they put like to play Sony, to play Sophie with all the, um, the PlayStations and, and, and the agents uh, that they have, like they, 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 they built. Uh, also, we don't know, but they probably have a lot of uh, GPUs, CPUs and, and, and storage. The approach that Sony and Polyphony use is that they st start the training like they call it tabula rasa, so a clean slate. So basically, Sophie didn't have any information. So basically, it started like learning and moving the wheel or the whatever they did it. And uh, initially, it was really bad, and everybody could like win to Sophie. But little by little, they start like training. For example, they say that the end uh, early days it was almost comical to see uh, or to watch uh, Sophie run into uh, into walls and like sleep and go in straight when they have to turn and those kind of, st of things but they start like playing and playing and initially the humans of out of 100 times they beat sophie 100 times but as i said little by little it start like learning and learning and learning and this is what different uh, that uh, some other uh, research use because some other research they use like examples of uh, players playing uh, to bootstrap the uh, the learning of the of the agent. In this case, Sony didn't do it, but well, that that was the uh, the, the approach. So there you go. So this is how uh, Polyphony Digital and Sony uh, made Sophie. They use reinforcement learning and artificial neural networks. Uh, so reinforcement learning to learn about the environment to 
check the state and they use artificial neural networks to code that state in something that the machine can understand and then learn by trial and, and error. Uh, some other examples in the real world of this is, for example, what uh, DeepMind, that is a company bought by Google a few years ago, they did. Uh, they use reinforcement learning uh, to teach a computer to play Pac-Man, well, Miss Pac-Man. So it was really, really good <laughs> playing Miss Pac-Man. And they also uh, train uh, a, a computer, well, an algorithm, or they have an agent that learned to play Go. And that agent uh, beat the champion of Go uh, a few years ago. So this is not new, uh, but it's very, very, very interesting. And um, before we go, uh, some um, opinion. Is it fair? I think that my answer is no. And it's not because the short response times that a computer has compared with a human. So a computer have can have a response between 20 to 30 milliseconds, while a human, it will take like 200 to 250 milliseconds. So it's not because of that. It's not because the amount of computing power that a computer has compared with a human brain, which also it has some other computing power in some other ways, but not the same computer mathematical uh, power. It's something different. So according to Sony, it's a, and it's something that I mentioned before, what they use as feature inputs is a precise map of the course with coordinates and also precise information about the load on each, each tire, the slip angle, and other vehicle state. But us as players, this is what we have. We, and if you are lucky, you have like a feedback wheel and some pedals, and then you can feel the pressure on the pedals and you can feel the, 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 uh, the pressure on the, on the wheel. So you know if you are losing like grip or something. Uh, and we have like what is ahead. Sometimes we have a map and also we have the, the uh, revolutions per second, the speeds and where are the other players. And that's what we have. So the computer has much more information that we have. And I think that that's not fair. And as I said, it's not because the computer is faster or has, and, or has more CPU power. Is because they have more information. So for me, that is kind of a uh, cheating. So in my book, that is kind of cheating. Uh, to me, it's more fair what DeepMind did, uh, for example, playing Atari uh, with re deep reinforcement learning. And it's not because I am a fanboy of DeepMind or Google, uh, which possibly I am. Um, but it's because it, the computer has available what the other player had, it was the screen and possibly some other feedback in the case of GT Sport, it will be, well, in the Gran Turismo, it will be like the wheel. But in my, in this case, I think that they have too much information and the players are in disadvantage. So it's not just the speed of reaction and the computer power, it's the amount of information that the player had, uh, sorry, that the uh, agent has and the players don't have. Also taking account that Sony mentioned that they train in the equivalent of 40,000 hours. In order to make Sophie learn, she duplicate herself and for each of her play a different Gran Turismo in different situations. We ne really need a lot of computation power for training. Uh, an update to your model, you run it for like millions of simulations and see, and see how they behave and then you change a bit and then you do this a lot of times. In the end, it, it becomes an expert, a lot like humans become experts. It drives for like 10,000 hours, like a human has to practice the skill until, until they become proficient at it. So. A human to become a kind of an expert, it will take like 10,000 hours. That if you play, well, if you do it like between six to eight hours per day, and also you wrestle maybe one day at the week, it will take you around three or four years uh, to become like an expert in something. And that's only 10,000 uh, hours. If you multiply that for 0.5, it will be like 10 years uh, to be like, the same as, as Sophie. So that's another part of this kind of a, yeah, this is like a, not very fair. And that's why the artificial intelligence well, of Sophie came up with very uh, interesting solution like this one with Emily Jones. Wait, what? How 
because experience is very cheap for them because they can play and play and play and play very fast many times and it's something that we cannot do so that's also kind of a not not very fair so uh, exploring and testing as i said for the computer for sophie is super cheap compared with us with human that we have a life and we need to do other stuff so this takes me to something else can humans beat sophie in the future maybe um, so I, I, I didn't notice that until I saw the AI and I was like, oh, okay, cool. I should do that <laughs> instead. AI から学ぶものっていうのが非常に多かったなというその早く走るために僕たちが考えもしないような走らせ方。確かに操作を見てみるとすごい理にかなっていて。I bet that、uh, if、uh, Polyphony Digital in、uh, putting in GT7, yeah, because GT Sport is basically that,、uh, they put a challenge like beat the AI. They will be people that it will be faster than the AI. Of, of course, if they show how the AI is doing it, because it's people is gonna mimic or the drivers they are gonna mimic what、uh, Sophie is doing, and then it's gonna be a cycle where Sony is gonna train um, uh, more with what the other what the players are doing, and so on and so on and so on. So I think that it's gonna be like a cat and mouse game. Where Sophie is gonna be best than humans. Humans are gonna learn all the tricks and they are gonna apply it. And then Sophie is gonna apply the tricks that the human are playing on them. And it's gonna go and go and go and go. And finally, my last rant is that I couldn't get the paper to really explain what it was going on. So I have to go like to many articles around the internet to find out how Sony did it,、uh, because the paper,、uh, the research paper, is behind a paywall. So it costs thirty-five dollars, which okay, I will pay it. I, I, there is not a problem, but there is no way to pay it. There is no way to subscribe it. So basically, I had no access to knowledge. So that for me is terrible.、Uh, knowledge should be like, I wouldn't say free, but it should be accessible for 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 everyone. And take an example, for example, the mine again, not a fine farm boy, but they have all the papers that are for free. And they could, you can download,、uh, you can download the papers of、uh, Dean Mine for free, possibly because they pay the open access, and、uh, and that's that's a good way. In the case of Sony, maybe cost a few thousand dollars to pay for for open access, but I think that Sony and Polyphony Digital they can afford that. So、uh, sometimes these things is like it's really Sony doing like good research、uh, they are doing for this research. Or they are just like doing commercially, and they because, yeah, it's like good marketing. So this is like a ooh, like that part of my taste, the taste in my mouth that is not very nice. We just reach a、uh, hundred、uh, subscribers. Thank you very much for everyone. Thank you very much.、Uh, we really really appreciate it. Thank you very much for staying with us. I hope that my explanation was good enough. To、uh, explain how Sony and Polyphony Digital、uh, made Sophie, and if you like it, just like the video, subscribe, bell, and we hope that、uh, you stay with us in another video of、uh, Casadilla Racing.